Hello, I'm Kevin Fernando, a GP partner at North Berwick Health Centre near Edinburgh and also Education Director of GP Notebook Education. Welcome to our new GP Notebook podcast, a bite-sized regular chat for all of us working in primary care. Podcasts will cover clinical tips and hacks, as well as hot topics to help make our lives a wee bit easier, but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. So today I'm delighted to be having a chat with Jim McMorrin, Editor-in-Chief of GP Notebook, who, amongst a a range of uh, interests, has a particular specialist interest and expertise in cancer. So today we're actually going to have a chat about the gallery trial and test to help improve our early diagnosis of cancer in primary care. So thanks, Jim, for for joining us today. That's very kind of you. So Jim, we're we're often stuck between a rock and a hard place, aren't we, in terms of cancer diagnosis? diagnosis in primary care and we're asked to improve our early detection of cancer yet avoid over investigation and referral especially in view of our stretched resources as we emerge from the pandemic part of our challenge of course in primary care is that we lack accurate tests to establish an early diagnosis of cancer but actually this new gallery test designed by gray looks like it actually may make our lives easier in primary care and, and also as i said help improve the lives of our our patients so I thought just for starters, uh, uh, Jim, and I've got to admit, it's not something I have a huge uh, knowledge of. What exactly is the, the gallery test and trial, Jim? Uh, hi, Kevin. Uh, thanks for asking me on. Well, uh, the gallery test is is something that's happening in England uh, rather than Scotland. So that's why you're not aware of it so much. And it's a trial um, which is being run by NHS England and King's College uh, and Galler- uh, Grail, who who actually developed the gallery t- st- uh, gallery t- uh, test itself, it's a it's a trial looking for asymptomatic uh, uh, cancer in in a population um, uh, where th- there are no sp- other sort of markers of cancer. So uh, the trial involves um, uh, it's a three year trial. It's going to involve. 140,000 uh, people across England. Uh, the ages are between uh, 50 and 77. Um, the the people in the trial won't have a diagnosis of cancer in the last three years or not being investigated for a possible cancer. And these people will have a blood test uh, every year for three years. Uh, the blood test... Uh, will be in a blinded trial. So 50% of people will have an active test uh, and uh, 50% of people will have a test which will uh, end up with their blood being stored and that can be examined later. Uh, The test is unique because uh, certainly to our screening system in that it's not for a specific cancer. It's not looking at breast cancer screening or lung cancer screening or bowel cancer screening. It's looking for effectively any cancer. So the blood test looks at um, uh, cell-free DNA, which is there's small fragments of DNA which are floating around in our blood. Uh, And it looks at something called methylation of the DNA, which is a change in the DNA, which doesn't change the the function of the DNA, but is a marker of change. And so it's a bit like wear and tear of our DNA. And so they're looking at patterns of this wear and tear. And those patterns can help to suggest that a person may have cancer. Uh, And so a positive test would then identify somebody as having a possible cancer. And the the test itself will also uh, suggest one or two possible cancers based on uh, the the test result. And those patients in England will then go into an urgent cancer pathway uh, dependent on what the GRAIL test has, uh, the, the gallery test has suggested. Um, so, so it's, it's basically something completely new. Um, as, as I say, it, it's 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 very very, you know, exciting if this could be a success and and basically diagnose people with asymptomatic cancer at an early stage, and then obviously that allows a greater chance for curative treatment. Absolutely. I mean, it, it, to be honest, Jim, it sounds almost too good to be true. You know? <laughs> and, and I'm sure there are some caveats and pitfalls we need to be be aware of. And, and we'll certainly come and discuss that just shortly. So 
it's quite different then, isn't it, from checking sort of PSA for prostate cancer screening or CA125 for uh, for ovarian or QFIT for colorectal. This is going to be quite a different approach to, to the use of a screening test. Yeah, it is mm. different. Well, one, it's not a, a marker, it's sort of an enzym- enzymatic marker such as PSA or CA125. Um, the other thing is that the positive predictive value of a positive result is significantly different. So in in England, you've got the nice urgent cancer referral guidelines, uh, and they're all based on what they call a positive predictive value of 3%. So somebody with a raised PSA and lower urinary tract symptoms are referred on a two-week wait pathway, and the, the chance of having cancer is defined by the guideline at 3%. So there's 3% yes. positive predictive value. For this test, if somebody has a positive test, uh, then the positive predictive value from the various studies that have looked at this is about 40%. So there's a 40% chance that somebody with a positive test will end up having cancer. So it's a completely different ballgame in terms of chance that the that a result will will be significant. And obviously that's that's important in counselling patients who are going through this whole process. Uh, absolutely. So does that mean, can I, can I use it for screening uh, as well as people presenting with symptoms or signs of possible cancer? So a big challenge, uh, another big challenge for us in primary care is that unexplained high platelet count. Would there be perhaps a role for the gallery test I- I- in that situation? Um, I think obviously you're going to have to go through the gallery trial first. And so th- this, I mean, I think it's got, it, the way that the gallery trial was developed was based on previous studies. So the previous studies that they've had were looking at uh, banks of blood where there were um, patients who had cancers, more than 50 cancers uh, in uh, a, a sample of over 2,000 patient uh, blood samples against controls where people didn't have cancers. And so they they basically used the, the uh, algorithm to try and define, you know, based on the blood test, does that patient have cancer? What stage of cancer that is? And so the test is very specific. So a true negative means a true negative. So basically there's it's a 99%, 99 point something percent uh, specificity. Uh, but the sensitivity, although brilliant compared to a lot of things, um, from the trial data is about 44%. So for stage one to three cancers. So basically there's a 44% chance that if you've got stage one to three cancer, that the test will pick somebody up. So it's not a perfect test, but it, that's the data that we're going on at the moment. The gallery trial, the three-year trial, will give us a huge amount of evidence as, it, as a screening test, and it may well be the ch- then uh, put into a, a system of a national screening test. But you could, in, in, the, in the USA, patients can request a gallery test and it's a it's a commercial test there so there you know, i'm sure that the scenario that you've you've suggested could be used in in a different clinical uh, system in a you know uh, a non uk system in this in the way that you've suggested but certainly not now because no. i say we're waiting for the results of this test uh, the t- trial itself sorry sure so, so if it's commercially available in the US, is it appropriately validated over there then? I say, I mean, it's validated in terms of, I mean, this is the big validation trial, isn't it? So, yeah. this is, so, so it's been validated on banks of blood uh, where, uh, which have been stored with people with cancer versus controls where people don't have cancer. And okay. as I say, it performs very, very well. It, if, if, it's a, if it's a negative test, it's really likely to be a negative test. It, uh, as I say, the, the sensitivity of the test increases um, as, you, as the stage of the cancer increases. So yeah. at, at sort of a stage four cancer, uh, metastatic cancer, then it's like 90%. Uh, sensitivity. So nine out of 10 people with a stage four cancer, the test would it, it would find. But we're really more interested in trying to pick up things early. So the sure. stage one to three cancers is where we want it to, to, to be successful. And I say it's about 40, 44%. But the, the whole algorithm is based on machine learning. And I assume that 
the test it's the trial itself will you know be giving you 70,000 blood samples a year uh, because the other half of the 140,000 is blinded uh, and 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 so the the algorithm I'm sure will learn as it's gone on and so it should sure. I, I assume get better and better great so are there any other potential pitfalls of the gallery test that we should be aware of in primary care and and perhaps any tips on how we might navigate them when when we eventually do start using the gallery test on a more regular basis well well I mean I think I think we first have to think about the trial itself first okay. and so 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 I mean I think there are you know the there are things that us as GPs need to be aware of. I mean, if if you consider that when you're 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 in a practice and your patients have been selected to be part of the gallery trial, if they've got a negative result, it doesn't mean they don't have cancer because, for one, they could be part of the blinded arm, and so there's a fifty percent chance that they did, they they uh, had a not a test at all, and then then obviously even if they were in the the arm itself. The current data would say that it's less than 50% chance that even if they had a st stage one to three cancer, that the test would identify them. So, you know, that just because somebody's in the, in the, uh, in the gallery trial, your patient, you would still use the appropriate safety netting advice that you would do to any patient. And also you would still encourage them to be part of the, the various national screening programs as well. So, I, th I, th I think it's it's a brilliant step forward. It seems to me, but it's not a perfect test, and you know, um, it 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 may well become a national screening uh, program eventually, based on the results of this trial. But even then, it's not perfect. It's not going to well. Certainly, at the data at the moment, it's, it's picking up less than uh, half of the stage one to three cancers. So. GPs still have to be aware, they still have to use their normal clinical acumen, still have to be aware of their own patients because GPs, uh, you know, knowledge of their own patients is almost, is, an in, is a, 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 a tool in helping diagnose patients anyway. GPs gut feeling is a, is a diagnostic tool and has been proven so. So if a GP is concerned about the patient, despite them being in the gallery trial, despite them having a negative test, that's an absolutely reasonable thing to consider to do other things, other investigations or refer appropriately. 100%. No, no machine will ever be able to replicate that clinical instinct, that clinical uh, acumen. Well, certainly in my opinion, I know some others might uh, disagree. So then overall, really, gallery test, it, it certainly doesn't sound like the panacea to, to cancer detection, but it sounds like a really useful tool in our toolbox alongside some of these other screening tests, as you said, as well as, our, again, our clinical history, examination and acumen to try and improve that early diagnosis of cancer. W would you say that's a fair appraisal? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I, th I think it's. I think it, it will be very important to see what the results of the trial are because obviously the, the, the basis of the trial, the, the basis of the evidence is based on looking at banks of blood at samples which have been stored. And this is a real trial with real people. And so hopefully the trial will show that there's been an early detection of people with uh, with early stage disease. And so, and that's obviously curative. Uh, so um, more likely to be curative the, the earlier stage that you get. And so I, th I think it's the evidence why we're doing it uh, the the studies by Lou et al etc et where they describe you know the, the evidence which is the basis of this trial is very uh, impressive and hopefully the trial results themselves will also be very impressive. So really, given that sensitivity you mentioned for uh, early stage cancers, forty four percent you quoted, if the test comes back negative. You know, my gut instinct still tells me something's amiss here. This is a patient, as you said, I've known for a decade plus. There's still a role then for referring that individual for a CT, thorax, abdomen, pelvis. Oh, definitely. I mean, yeah. and also that that is something also. So so once, uh, you know, the, so from the uh, clinical point, point of view of the GP, definitely that, uh, you know, if, if you think something's wrong, despite them going through the gallery trial, not having a positive test, there still could be something wrong. Uh, the other thing is that 
because patients have a positive test, they'll go into the two-week wait pathway chosen. One of the slight, it's only a very, very is is uh, sort of weaknesses of the of the test is that it's not a hundred percent at diagnosing where the tissue of origin of the cancer is, and okay. so there will be a proportion of patients, a very small proportion, where they have got cancer, but and the tissue of origin has is erroneous, which has been either the one or two which has uh, been suggested by the the gallery test, and so those patients. Uh, has been suggested that if if a patient has a positive test and there's no cancer found at the one or two pathways which, which has been suggested by the test, then one thing to consider would be to do a TAP CT, which would basically, you know, g- give the once over to check that there's no cancer. Because um, and so that is one of the things that actually uh, became a, a suggested protocol during the the, the sort of uh, um, discussions prior to the, te- uh, the the trial actually uh, starting. Great, no, no, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks for your insights there, Jim. So really, uh, so, so really to, to summarise, uh, certainly the latter part of what you discussed. Um, very much we mustn't forget about our role as HCPs uh, in in using our clinical ac- acumen, but also importantly in safety netting as well. There's always going to be a place for safety netting, even with widespread use of of the gallery test. No, excellent. Yeah, that yeah. I would say, I would say yeah, yeah. that's the main main. You mustn't just think as a GP they're in the te- in the in the gallery trial. They've got a negative test, or they've. Because as I say, fifty percent of them won't be tested anyway, and even if they are tested, it could still be missing cancer. So you still have to have the normal um, level of alertness in 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 case of you know that there may be something sinister going on. And GPs are very good at that because, as you say, that they know their patients. And as I say it's 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 an evidence based thing now that gut feeling, uh, GP gut feeling, is important in diagnosis of cancer. Uh, absolutely, I, I, com- I, I completely agree, and something I frequently talk about with you know with my GP trainees. Great, so thanks so much, Jim. Uh, that, that brings us to the end end of our podcast, everyone. Thanks so much for your input, Jim. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to do a couple more uh, uh, discussions like this, uh, drawing on your vast uh, expertise. So thanks for listening, everyone. I, I hope you found this podcast helpful. Please make sure to subscribe to our podcast, which are available on all major platforms. Also, get in touch via social media if you have any questions, comments, or ideas for future podcasts. You should also visit us at gpnotebookeducation.com to register for our 2022 GP Notebook study groups. And you can also download our free GP Notebook shortcuts, clinical aid memoirs to make our lives a wee bit easier, but ultimately to help improve the lives of our patients in primary care. Thanks for listening.